Next, I'd like to make some observations about areas under curves. So let's start with this example. Well, before starting with this example, remember, when we defined the definite integral, it was a result of the approximation of area using rectangles. And the fundamental theorem of calculus said we could use an antiderivative to find that exact number. Well, find this area then. The area under y equals x squared plus 1 between 1 and 2. Well, this area, you could call it a. Uh, I'll just not call it anything. I'll call it the integral from 1 to 2 of our function. would give us the area between 1 and 2. Well, how do we do this? Uh, so it's what? A third x cubed plus x evaluated from 1 to 2. Derivative of this is x squared plus 1, so that's right. Um, evaluate from 1 to 2, and what do we get? We get 8 thirds plus 2 minus 1 third plus 1. And uh, what do we get there? 10 thirds, is it? Uh, 8 thirds minus 1 third is 7 thirds. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get uh, 7 thirds plus 1, which is 10 thirds. So we can use an integral to find the area. But we can actually extend this to multiple functions. And what do we mean by that? Well, let's just say observe. Well, observe, let's make it a sentence. Observe, we can use an integral. Let's spell integral properly. To find the following area. Let's just say the following. Well, let's draw a picture of what we can use the integral to find. Let's take two functions. Let's say they look like this. Let's say they intersect at A and B. Let's call one F and let's call one G, both functions of X, functions of whatever down our x-axis. Well, let's say we wanted to find this area. How can we find that area? Well, let's make this observation on both functions. So let's just say equals f, let's draw f, which looks like that, and let's mark off a and b again. Well, we can find, this is f, we can find this area. Great. But this area we want over here is given by this area without this area down here. Without negative. Let's draw G. Let's draw G better. Here's G. This area we want between these two curves is given by this area without this area. You can see in this drawing, if we take the area under F and remove the area under G, we're left with the area between f and g. Well, how do we do these two integrals? Well, this integral is the integral of f from a to b, from that observation, or from definition of the definite integral. This integral is given by the integral of g with respect to x from a to b. So if we want this area, all we have to do is compute this integral and then subtract this integral. But notice, the variables and bounds are all the same. So we can smash that together as one integral. 
f minus g with respect to x on a to b. So since the bounds and the variables were all the same, we can combine these using the properties of definite integrals. So from this observation, the area between two curves is given by the integral of the top curve minus the bottom curve on uh, the interval on which uh, you're considering. So let's look at an example. Find the area find the area between these two curves. f of x equals x, let's do root x, and g of x equals x squared. Well, you can draw these functions. You don't have to. I won't draw them. Well, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see what I do. But the most important thing to find first is where they intersect. So let's find where they intersect. How do we find where they intersect? Well, set them equal. So let's say find where they intersect. Remember, the bounds of our integral are x values. So all we need are the x values where they intersect. Um, so root x equals x squared. Solve this for x, I'll square everything first. So you get x equals x to the 4. x to the 4 minus x equals 0. x times x cubed minus 1 equals 0. x equals 0 or x equals 1. An observation you could have made on the second line or even the first line, I guess. But you could go through all the algebra. And in general, um, you would have to go through all the algebra. Um, so right here, we have that these functions intersect at 0 and at 1. Well, so that would tell us the area is the integral from 0 to 1. Well, let's write it like this. f minus g with respect to x. Let's put a question mark. Because we have two functions. We don't know which one is on top. In, the, in this uh, example, f was on top. But we're just given two functions. f could be on top or g could be on top. So does that mean, well, so that means it could be, the exact area could be given by one of those two. How would we figure out which function is on top? Well. We know they intersect at 0 and 1. Um, they happen to be ordered pairs 0, 0, and 1, 1. Um, we have two functions that go through these points. They're going to look something like this. These actually do look something like that. But how can we figure out algebraically which one is larger than the other on this interval? Well, let's take a point inside here. I'm going to take, you could take any point inside 0 to 1. You could take a half, 3 quarters, 29, 48. Um, I'm going to take x equals a quarter because the algebra will work out nicely. What is f of a quarter? Well, f of a quarter is a half. Great. What is g of a quarter? g of a quarter is 1 16. Well, right here, this tells you all you need to know about these two functions. f of a quarter is a half. g of a quarter is a 16. A half is larger than a 16. So this tells us, so I'll say, so f is larger than g on the interval we're considering, 0 to 1. f is larger than g. which tells us this computation will give us the area. So let's just do this computation. Integral 0 to 1, f is root x. 
minus g, so minus x squared. What's this integral? x to the 1 half, the integral, the, an antiderivative would be what? x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. Well, that's the same as 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. So we get 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 1 third x to the 3. Take the derivative here, you get x 3 halves and 2 thirds multiplied by 1. So you get x to the 1 half minus x squared. So that's right. And we're on the interval 0 to 1. At 0, we get 0, so all you have to do is substitute 1. So we get 2 thirds times 1 minus 1 third times 1. So that tells us the area is 1 third. Um, and this diagram actually is um, accurate for these two functions. F would be here, G would be here. Um, so we can use an integral to find areas between curves. That's a very important observation. 